Hey everybody, I'm Justin with VMP Performance. I'm back at the old shop on the dyno with our 2011 Mustang GT project car known as Chucky. Chucky is a Gen 1 Coyote engine. And as many of you know, it already has a 2018 intake manifold swap done to it. However, we have never done an intake manifold shootout on a Gen 1 Coyote. If you remember, Track Attack was a Gen 2 Coyote. So we have got a bunch of manifolds here today to test on the good old Chuckster. We're not gonna leave you Gen 1 Coyote owners hanging. We wanna know what is the best manifold for the Gen 1 Coyote, what kind of horsepower numbers and torque numbers do the different manifolds produce. Yes, we're going to be looking at torque output today as well because that is such a popular topic when it comes to intake manifold shootouts. I'm gonna hop in the car with my laptop and baseline the 2018 intake manifold. Unported. For those of you that aren't familiar with our project car Chucky, it is a 2011 Mustang GT. It has Dynatech 1 and 7 8 long tube headers. It's got a JLT cold air, an 18 intake manifold, unported, um, an FTI torque converter. However, on the dyno, the torque converter is locked up, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, it runs on 93 octane pump gas. It's got a little bit bigger injector to support future E85 swap but it is not on E85 right now. And that's pretty much it. It's a very basic 2011 Mustang GT with bolt-ons. Uh, one of the guys just pointed out to me that it has Weldon Flowmasters on the back. We gotta get rid of those one day. Um, so my flash is done. I'm gonna get it fired up and do our baseline pull with the first intake manifold. It made 410 rear wheel horsepower, 378 rear wheel torque. We know the 2018 intake manifold sacrifices a little bit of low end torque, but makes a lot more top end horsepower and carries that horsepower much higher in the RPM range. We don't see Chucky drop below 400 rear wheel horsepower until 7,400 RPM. At 7,500, Chucky's making about 390 and it really doesn't start to plummet till about 7,700. It's still about 360, 370. So with a proper tune and higher shift points of the track, the 18 intake manifold makes more average horsepower. We just swapped on the 2018 truck manifold. We're gonna run it on Chucky and see what it does. It's gonna be interesting because the 18 truck manifold is different than the 11 to 14 and 15 to 17 truck manifold that we tested on the previous video when we did the Gen 2 Coyote intake manifold shootout. I just ran the 2018 truck manifold on Chucky and the results were quite interesting. It comes on like a bat out of hell at 3,700 RPM. Chucky actually made more torque than horsepower. I didn't even see this when we did our Gen 2 Coyote intake manifold shootout on track attack. This 2018 truck intake is definitely something very, very different. It makes a ton of torque, however, it starts falling off at 5,800 RPM. And knowing what I know and having tuned many 2018 trucks, their stock rev limiter is at 6,000. Ford just apparently did not design this truck intake to make any high RPM horsepower at all. It is actually making 340 rear wheel horsepower at 7,500 RPM. So it drops off by about 50 horsepower from the peak at 5,700. This could make for a very interesting track test though. More on that later.
just for good measure, we put the stock 2011 intake manifold back on Chucky and ran it. We saw 405 rear wheel horsepower, 388 rear wheel torque. However, pretty much what we know is that the stock 2011 manifold is terrible at high RPM. And that's why we originally got rid of it. We were hoping to see better ET and higher mile an hour using the 2018 intake manifold, which produced more average horsepower. So once again, we put the stock 2011 intake manifold on for good measure. It made 405 rear wheel horsepower, but by 7,500 RPM, it was down to 350 rear wheel horsepower. And it continued to drop to about 325 by 77 to 7,800 RPM. Pretty darn dismal, but actually pretty good middle of the road when you consider that the car came with a 60, 500 RPM rev limiter stock. Ford didn't expect the Coyote to ever really rev any higher and they just didn't design for that. Actually, let me correct myself. The 2011s had a 7,000 RPM rev limiter stock. So at 7,000, it's still making about 385 or so. But once again, we've got the results of this intake manifold. We'll compare them to all the other intake manifolds as well. This is the Gen 1 intake manifold shootout. We put on the Cobra Jet intake with a VMP twin 69 millimeter throttle body that we have available now and ran it. The results were incredibly disappointing. It made 410 rear wheel horsepower, but it only made 357 rear wheel torque and the shape of the curve was honestly garbage. It did so well on the Gen 2 intake manifold shootout but it did terrible on this Gen 1 intake manifold shootout. And all I can figure is that the Gen 1 head, we're really seeing the weakness of that cylinder head and the lower lift cam profiles compared to what's in the Gen 2 Coyote. Based on what we saw here on the dyno today, the Cobra Jet intake manifold does not do well at all on the Gen 1 Coyote. I'm really surprised because previously it was basically the king of intake manifolds. It made the most average horsepower but it was also the most expensive and it just doesn't have any upside right now. It's extremely low on torque. It has a little horsepower peak at 6,600. It makes 410 rear wheel horsepower, but it's straight on downhill from there. It only drops off to about 370 at 7,700 RPM but it's still not as strong on an average horsepower and torque basis as the 2018 Mustang Manifold. I was disappointed. I thought the Cobra Jet was gonna make really good power like it had done previously when we tested it on Track Attack, which has a Gen 2 Coyote. It didn't. I think we're gonna have to go to the drag strip and do a test where we actually swap the intake manifold at the track same day and see what the results are because these dyno results, they are really surprising to me, but I've been testing intake manifolds all day. I checked over the tune, I checked over the data logs, I trust my dyno equipment, and this is pretty much what it is. So you just watched me test a bunch of intake manifolds. We ran the factory 2011 Mustang intake manifold, we ran the very popular 2018 Mustang intake manifold, we even ran the 2018 truck manifold and found out that it makes more torque than horsepower. And of course, we ran the king of intake manifolds, the Cobra Jet. And the results were incredibly surprising. It seems like for a Gen 1 Coyote that the 2018 Mustang manifold cannot be beat. Whether you want horsepower or you think you need a lot of low end torque for going to the grocery store, VMP offers all of these intake manifolds. And for a limited time, we will not be beat on 2018 intake manifold or 2018 truck manifold prices. In addition to carrying the intake manifolds, we also carry the limiters, which you'll need for installing this intake manifold on 11 to 14. 
We carry the plug and play harnesses, which you need for installing it on 15 to 17. We also offer custom tuning at VMP Performance to make the intake manifold and the rest of your combination work together. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website, vmpperformance.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share our channel. I'll see you next time.